Hello everyone and welcome to another historic video. So today we're going to be taking a look at a bar class mid-range deck in historic. We got a new card that is going to blow your mind if you haven't been keeping up with the set. We got this one card from Wilds of Train that is absolutely insane for the bar class and that is Ruby Daring Tracker. I did say that this is going to make the bar class insane during the review of the set and having played with the card, it does seem insane. So this is a 2 mana 1 2 mana dork that generates either of the crew colors. But what's weird is that it has haste. So let's say if you have a bar class down and you upgrade the bar class, then you play the ruby out and you can immediately tap for mana, which is net positive when you play this card. But it doesn't even end there. If it actually ended there, I would have still been happy. Now, whenever this card attacks while you control a creature with power 4 or greater, it also gets a plus two plus two. So if you play the bar class and then played Ruby after, this is gonna grow into a four or five attacker with haste. That is if you control other four power creature, which isn't going to be an issue with this deck because Halana and Lelina in this deck will pump your creatures above four power. Lelia also goes over four power. If you have bar class down, Jarsal also becomes four power. If you have Minx and Boo, the Boo token will also grow into four power as well. So there is a multiple ways of achieving this, which can empower Ruby into attacking for a lot of damage. Now, traditionally, bar class decks usually play this in like a combo shell. If you level up the bar class to level three, if you pair it up with Mox Ember and now Ruby, you can probably go through your deck and then just try to combo your opponent by playing a bunch of cheap legendary creatures and then give everything haste and win the game. But that's not what we're doing here. We're only using the bar class as ways to ramp. So treat the bar class as a ramp card in this deck. And if you do eventually level this up to level three, then you can kind of treat this card as the one ring. So having said that, we're going to be jumping into some historic best of three to show you guys how that does. So, let's hop on over. Ooh. Okay. Should I grab a land? No, oh, man. I'm greedy. Okay, so let's say I go bar class and I upgrade it next turn. I have one mana, I play the ruby, and then I have two mana. And I can play the Lelia on a single turn. That seems pretty insane. Wait, a mirror? No way, right? Okay, that's broken. That's straight up broken. And now this is gonna attack for additional 2 damage because we control Lelia. Questing Beast is a little bit rude. Five damage. Let's just attack with Lelia here. Because we could have gotten um, a two mana spell, right? or a 4 mana spell that we can play. It's 
Something like that. They're playing red. Why is that? Oh, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on. So they're playing... This is... What is it called? This is a... Uh... Tooth and nail. I see. So do I win? If they don't block the boo, I guess they lose. I guess they lose either way. Oh my god, I actually stole the worm! So they can't actually even combo. I mean, they're dead, but it's... Hilarious. Who says you look easy to our aim is Okay, that is hilarious. So uh a crone war. Not sure about Clothus. Um Will. Um, not sure about Pitting Needle. That's probably like what I would do normally. But I don't think we need Pitting Needle. I think we'll bring these these three in and will. I'm gonna cut a Mingsen Boo. Even though it just won me the game. And I'll cyber out copy of a Lelia, a jar, and a Rahilda. Something like that. Funny thing is, like I, I feel like we would have lost if we didn't win there. They would have tooth and nailed for actually they couldn't have they didn't have World Spine Worm anymore. That's funny. Decent. I'm not even sure if we go Jarsel next turn because there's nothing to Jarsel. Huh. So this is where like the Light of Halfling is kind of awkward, right? So if I bar class next turn. I'll have two mana. Hmm. I think we play this. They have a lot of mana, by the way, like three, four, five. Now they have six mana. Um, 
Probably a non-land. Okay, so how do we kill this Cavalier of Thorn? I guess we can Molten Impact, Molten Impact with Jar Soul. I'm just afraid I'm gonna die here. Tooth and Nail is a very, very scary combo. Very, very scary combo. Wow, you play Storm the Festival? So how does that work? You play Tooth and Nail, but you also play Storm of the Festival. Like, you have to not have something, right? Oh my god. So they got 5, 6, 7, 8 mana? Opponent has 8 mana at the moment. So Tooth and Nail is a 9 mana combo. It's a 9 mana combo? And it does 30 damage trample. So even if I sit back here, I would probably just die. I'll leave one blocker. Another Cavalier. They missed out on Nykthos. They shocked it though. Defense of the heart. At the beginning of your return, at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls three or more creatures, sacrifice defense of the heart. Search your library for up to two creatures cards. Put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So this is what. Oh, they're not playing to the nail. They're just playing defense of the heart. Oh, that's actually pretty cool, actually. That's why they get to play Storm the Festival. Oh, wow. Okay, opponent has been cooking. But, uh, they lost. Five, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. Look at us. We are top. Okay, okay, okay. That's actually pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Good job, opponent. Um... Defense of the heart, huh? So I didn't know that. But it's also like the combo comes after the turn after. So I don't actually know if this is actually good. Decent. It's actually pretty good. I was about to say, like... Um... I'm actually going to strangle this now. I messed up. I was supposed to actually play the land first and then strangle. I didn't notice the... I, I didn't notice that it was a mountain. Uh, 
Uh, we'll go with land. Kill this out. I've been seeing a lot of goblins. This is like, uh, this is the third day and I'm, I've am i seen goblin every single day. Okay, it's, it's a bit unfortunate we can't go bar class here. Um, we'll go land again. So, we go Hajar. Attack you for 4 damage. Hopefully, uh, we don't die here. We could, potentially. Nice. Okay, so... Can we win this game here? Can we win this game? Who says you look easy to follow? <laughs> His words, not mine. Okay, nice. Did we win actually? I don't even know. I mean, I have a lot of damage, so. So Haywire Might comes in, Brotherhood's End comes in. Um, not sure about Crone War. Probably not. Pithing Needle doesn't stop anything. I think that's it. We'll cut a Lelia. This car is really good. It was really good for finishing, but it's probably not that great. Yeah, Rohilda and Hajar can go. So we got what? Beseju? We got two Haywire Mites to get rid of the enchantments. Brotherhood's End and a Beseju in hand. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to play the Brotherhood's End. Hmm. Because I have, um, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to play the Delighted Halfling. I think I'm supposed to actually pass here. With the Baseju up. Yeah, so that's what they're what they were gonna do. Jarsel.
Let's actually do this. I don't want to commit to the board too much. That's a good one. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so they brotherhood ended. Let's uh, just play out Minx and Boo. Go for the ice, Boo! To the ice! Bigger is always, always. I'm gonna sit back because uh, I don't want them to haste. I'm not sure if they actually won. We'll see here. Did we- did I lose? Yeah, I did. Wow. Impressive. They didn't play anything. Despite them having everything. They just, uh... I think I'm actually going to apply some pressure through Clothus then, if they're not gonna play anything. One lander. It's so good otherwise though. I'm gonna try it. Um... I'm gonna try this hand. Because if we just get one land, everything unlocks. Like, that's so good for us. And we still have a removal spell on turn one. And we also have a removal spell for the enchantment as well. Like, I feel like this isn't like the worst hand I've ever seen. Nice. Okay, so we, we found a land. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, I couldn't hold up green mana here with Haywire Might. Okay, the opponent passes. So this is this is for toughness. So Brotherhood's end doesn't matter. It goes to graveyard, which means Haywire Might can come back. We 
Because last time opponent really relied on the enchantments and then just Brotherhoods ended and then just finished me off in a single turn. So yeah, that worked out. Um, that gamble paid off. So got really lucky drawing the Den of the Bugbear. Okay. Oh no. Mercy. I don't want to play against. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know which one is better. Bar class into Ruby or Ruby into the Light of Halfling. So if I play the uh, bar class this turn, I can play Ruby and I'll have two mana up, which I can use it to Molten Impact. If I do Ruby here into the Light of Halfling, I can bar class and I can still Molten Impact. But Ruby won't get the plus one plus one. So bar class is technically better. So we're going to upgrade this. Play the Ruby. And then we're going to Molten Impact. The one ring, that's fine. I think we Ming Sen Boo. Fight the good fight. Actually, fight all the fights. I'm just not sure if I should actually play Jar Soul. I think I should play Rahil. Uh, I think I should play the Delighted Halfling. So I can kill any creature that comes out. Like that one. So we do have a bit of a situation though. We need a one mana spell in the graveyard. I'm gonna attack. Then we're gonna draw five cards. Attack, my wily friend! Attack! Then we're gonna get a non-land. We're gonna pass because okay, I'm not I'm not committing to the board just because like I don't know their deck, so they could have like a board wipe, and I don't want to lose because of that. Um, 
guess I'll play this. Five. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So opponent is dead. Nice. Yeah, I was a bit afraid. Like, I think that was a bit lucky there. This deck usually doesn't do pretty good, pretty well against um, a life gain deck, so. A Crown War 100% needs to come in. Same with Will. I'm gonna put in Chandra as well just because it deals 4 damage. 4 damage is gonna be the important number. Gonna go down Lelia. And Rahilda. Hajar. Um, I think I'm just going to take out Rahilda, Rahilda here. So, so far, Ruby, Daring Tracker, has been unbelievably insane. Like, it has just been a phenomenal. Like, this hand would have been otherwise, like, unkeepable, makes it keepable because of Ruby. So that's pretty nice. It's like they have like a removal spell maybe. I should have actually expected an Orcish Bowmaster. I shouldn't have attacked there. That was my bad. Um... Guess we'll go Halana and Elena. Yeah, Ruby is insane. This car is insane, by the way. It is genuinely so freaking good. So I don't know what to do. Is it Minx and Boo? I think it actually might be Minx and Boo. Or is it Lelia plus Bolton Impact? Hmm, I don't know what to do. What do I do? Sweet. Now let us fight. He will never win because it's too tiny.
Geoldred. Okay. That's definitely a card. 100% a card. Hmm. Sheldrade is kind of annoying, actually. But I think because they don't have, like, a Fatal Push mana... I think I'm just going to kill these. So now they have to block the boo, otherwise they lose the game. Hey, GG's. Alright, we played five games. We went to 5-0. I was actually very surprised. Um, and uh, a lot of these games really did show how powerful this card was. I'm very happy with this card. Like, unlike Katilda, which only has one toughness. Not only does this card have haste, but it also generates a mana. And also... If you have a power 4 or greater, which isn't going to be too hard with Minx and Boo, Halana and Elena, or Lelia, or Bar class buffing your creatures into a 4 power, like, this is so good. It actually blows my mind how good this is. Um, I, I'm sure you can play a version of this now with the Mox Ember, um, Bergy, things like that. Like, that could work, like, with this card. And then just go through your entire deck with bar class. And then just win the game on the spot. Because th this thing also has haste as well. So like it's really good with the bar class combo deck. If you really want this deck to be a combo deck. But I chose not to. But because like as you've seen from some of these games that I played. I won games without bar class. Like but without bar class. If you just go full combo route with Bergy and things like that. You might have some problems uh depending on whether or not you draw bar class so like your in, your deck becomes really bad if you don't draw bar class so i've been an advocate of a bar class mid-range deck for maybe three sets now and every time i played it it has performed pretty nicely and uh yeah i mean this card's very great uh, one thing i will say you might not be very fond of this card halana and alina but in this particular deck, it's really, really good. You can play this out for 2 mana. Even if you play this out for 4 mana, just because, like, this deck does put on some pressure early. If this card does come down, it's pretty hard to remove. It's a 4 mana card, so... If bar class is ever on the big battlefield, this becomes a 3-4 first striker and with reach at that, so... It can be a little bit expensive if you don't have bar class, so that's why we only play one copy of it, but... Every time I played uh, Halana and Lina onto the battlefield, I've been very happy with it. And uh, yeah, that's... We're playing 23 lands, happy with lands. I think I'm very happy with uh, playing 3 copies of Minx and Boo instead of 4 or instead of 2. And I think the number of creatures that we have in, in the deck feels pretty nice as well. I will say I do want to go up on Hajar to 3 copies somehow, but... As you can see, it's uh, kind of hard to fit everything into the deck. So I have put a, an extra Hajar in the sideboard as a result, as you can see here. So if you're playing against like a board wipe deck, that's when you bring uh, some Hajars in. And uh, Haywar Mites, very good against one ring. Very good against Goblin and Shamans, as you've seen from game two. And the reason why I'm playing Haywire Might instead of Cast into the Fire is because this is a one mana card. So as you've seen from game two, 
The fact that there was no one mana card in the graveyard and then Haywire might ended up going into the graveyard and then Jarso could rebuy it back is very, very huge, right? Because this is a one mana card, Jar it synergizes very well with Jarso. But that's why we play Haywire Mites instead of Cast into the Fire. And we play two copies of Pithing Needle against uh, creature decks, Mazes Mine, uh, Mazes End, things like that. Creature combo decks, I mean. Uh, Soul Guy Lantern, Graveyard Hates versus Kethas decks. Stone of Eric, Graveyard Hate versus Yegamoth decks, and Samurai's Gamji decks. Cloth is just kind of an all purpose Graveyard Hate. Uh, we play this instead of Unlicensed Hearse just because this is a gruel card. If you pair it up with Bar Class, not only is it really easy to get the Devotion up because of the Bar Class for the Cloth is, but you can also give it a discount, right? And two copies of Brotherhood's End. So the reason you might be wondering like why do we not have Giganta in this, in this deck is because a lot of the times after sideboarding we're bringing a lot of these a lot of these cars that otherwise couldn't be played with Giganta. So entirely I just scrapped the Giganta plan into the sideboard just because like game two and three you're not gonna have Giganta anyways. So instead we have two copies of Brotherhood's Ends just because it sometimes doesn't affect our board just because if you have the bar class down, Charcel survives, Lelia survives, Alana and Lina survives. So it's just a really nice board wipe that for our deck and you can also use it to destroy all artifacts. And then we have a Chandra. If you want to, if you're playing against a control deck, um, like a full control deck that doesn't play any creatures where you have to take out some strangles and molten impacts, then you can bring in a copy of Chandra, copy of Clothis, copy of Thrun, right? Copy of Thrun. That's why we have a copy of Chandra there. And two copies of Akron's War. Very good against Mono Green. So that's why we have two copies here. And same with Will. It might be a bit expensive, right? Even if you get the bar class up to level two, this still costs four mana. But we do play uh, the Letter Halflings and Ruby. You might still be able to curve this out. And then usually you want to play this against like things like Shaldred or things like generally something that's really big. And the uh, last card is Thrun against the control deck. It's pretty disgusting. Uh, there was one time I was playing the mirror control and I didn't know what this card did. And I tried to target it. I knew the spell couldn't be countered. But when I tried to target it, you couldn't do it. I didn't know that. So it says that it can't be targeted with non-green spells your opponent controls or abilities from non-green sources your opponent controls. So, so it's pretty nasty against a control deck. And it also has indestructible your turn. So yeah, that's kind of the gist of my sideboard plan there. But anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video so far, as always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.